Hey folks, how's it going? Today we're going to be having a lot of fun inside of Touch Designer and I'm going to show you how easy it is to make a really compelling kaleidoscope effect with only a few operators, really only about two operators and sometimes you can even get away with one operator. And this can be used on any kind of content to really quickly create some interesting visual effects. We can see here that I'm getting some really cool, almost, you know, Christopher Nolan interstellar situations going on here. And I'm just using the base kind of nature video that comes with Touch Designer. So let me go ahead and delete everything we got here and we're gonna start from scratch. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a movie file in for my source. Now this could be anything. I find that in a lot of cases having more content, more motion on screen lends itself to these kaleidoscope effects. But if you are looking for a little bit more of a chill effect, even still images can work really well with this. So first thing I'm gonna do is change my movie over to one of the nature videos that comes with Touch Designer. And then what I'm gonna do is a lot of this effect really comes down to one operator that we're gonna use, and that is the tile top. And the tile top is really cool because it gives us a bunch of parameters for how we can tile an input image or texture. Now the best way to really feel what's going on is to actually see it in action. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect my movie file into the tile. And now we can see I essentially have four copies of that tile. Now we can see here our repeat X and Y parameters on the tile top allow us to dictate whether it's, you know, one copy on the X axis or two copies. And similarly with the Y axis, we can make that decision as well. Now I like to leave this at two and two, but one of the really fun things about this is that with only a handful of these parameters, you know, whether it's the repeat X, the flipping or reflecting or the overlapping that we're gonna look at, you can really have a lot of fun experimenting with these, taking them from being static values to dynamic values and really dialing it in for your content. So even actually out of the gate, one of the first things we can do to see the power of this tile top is just to turn on the reflect X and reflect Y buttons. Even just turning those on already is giving us a lot of this really interesting feel where we can see that all of the corresponding edges now line up with each other, almost as if they're mirroring from the center out. Now this is great because this is really the basis of our kaleidoscope effect. Now if this video had a bit more motion, we could even see that for some folks, this might be enough for your kaleidoscope effect. So let me actually change this video with either one of the water ones, or you can see one where even a little bit of motion just adds so much interest inside of that kind of kaleidoscope effect. We can change this to the smoky one, and now it looks like we're in a Christopher Nolan movie. Or the water one, even just a little bit of that textural motion inside of your content can really help make this kaleidoscope effective. Now this isn't the only way we can kind of play with this kaleidoscope. There are two sets of parameters, which I think you're gonna be turning on or off, probably based on your content. I think the reflect X and Y is probably something that most people will always have on, but the flip X and Y and the overlap U and V are really interesting parameters. So what I'm gonna do so we can see what these functions are doing is first I'm gonna turn the reflect X and Y off, because it's a lot easier to see what the overlaps are doing when that's off. Now in this case, we have our four quadrants and when they get reflected, they basically just get flipped over so that all of their edges mirror each other. When we start to play with this overlap parameter, what we're doing is essentially stretching the different tiles on top of each other and then blending between them. Now, we can see that here as I kind of increase these sliders, it's scaling up and kind of blending that original source image together into something that's actually completely unique from the original one. Now, obviously this doesn't look as interesting yet because our reflection is off. So let me turn these overlaps back to zero. I'm gonna turn on my reflect X and Y. And now we'll notice that the real difference of these overlaps starts to become apparent because right now with just the reflections on, we can see that we have the complete image from before getting reflected perfectly. But for a lot of the kaleidoscope effects you've probably seen online, there is a little bit of this data blending feeling going on to it. And that's where this overlap U and V comes in because you can see as I start to overlap things, all of a sudden we get these areas 
that are creating patterns that didn't really exist in the original source material at all. And this can be really cool if you have a bunch of high contrast or high color content that you're feeding into the system because all of those things are going to be blending over the edges and creating some really wonderful effects. Now very similarly you can also do something similar with the flip x and y except in this case instead of worrying about the overlap what it's doing is just determining which points line up into the center and which points line up on the outside. So this can be a, just a great way if you have some content that maybe is you know, more bottom left heavy or more bottom or top right heavy, and you kind of want that heavy density of information in the middle of your screen, these flip X and Y can be very helpful for that. So now we're kind of exploring the aesthetic here, but it still feels very static. And one of the really great things I've seen with like kaleidoscopes is this kind of swooshing motion where it feels like it's moving through planes or through different kinds of layering. And there's a lot of different ways we can do that in Touch Designer. One of the easiest, I think, is to actually use a mirror top. So I'm going to go ahead and make a mirror top. And I'm going to put it in between my movie file in and my tile. Now, in this case, when I put it in, it's going to mirror along the Y axis. And in this case, it doesn't particularly matter which way you want to mirror or any of that because what we're actually looking to gain from this mirror is the ability to do a little bit of rotation here. And the nice thing about this mirroring rotation, which you could totally replace with something like a transform top or an over and a composite, you know, however you want to generate that kind of movement inside of your texture is actually totally okay. But I find the mirror top is nice and easy and it further continues to build on this idea that we have where we want to take the information from our texture, but we don't mind if it starts to get a little bit overlapped and, you know, the data starts to mangle itself a little bit because that's just going to turn into more and more kind of beautiful complex patterns and new patterns emerging from that content. So in this case, I like using the mirror top and the effect that we can see from this rotation, when we look at it in the mirror top, not very compelling. It just looks like it's spinning the mirroring position around itself. But if we were to go to our tile and look at the tiling while we're changing this rotation parameter, then we're going to see all of this really beautiful kind of, you know, morphing between different areas of the image. We can see kind of this iterative, this iterative <laughs> patterns like leaving the center. So there's a lot of really interesting things we can do just by kind of moving this rotation so that even content that may be still, you know, whether it's a still image or something like this nature footage that has a little bit of textural motion, but not as much actually overt things moving in the scene, this can be a really great way to kind of add that to those pieces of content. So in this case, if I just have this rotation slider and I want to automate it to go from, you know, zero to 360, I really could use something as simple as an LFO chop. So I'm going to create this LFO chop. I'm going to set the frequency to be very, very small so I can just get a subtle bit of movement inside of my content here. So I'm going to set that frequency to be 0.005. I'm going to put a math chop after it because I know I have to scale my LFO range into a rotation. So on my math chop in the range, I know that my LFO by default is going to go from zero, uh, negative one to positive one as its range. So I can change my from range to match that. And then I know my to range is going to be from zero to 360. So I can say zero up to 360. Now I can go ahead and put a null chop here. And I can reference that value inside of my mirrors rotation parameter here. Now, if we go and watch our kaleidoscoping effect, we can see that now that we're going to start to see a little bit more of this kind of morphing kaleidoscope feel where the actual pattern itself is going to evolve, even if the content itself isn't moving or is, you know, maybe just textural motion. And this can create some really cool effects we can see here. It looks like, you know, those, those waters are almost becoming like jets or, or arrows pointing into the middle. The middle is starting to morph. So you can see it's really easy to make cool looking 
effects and kaleidoscopes. And we've only dropped, you know, a mirror top and a tile top into this mix so far. Now, one of the fun things I said like earlier, please take time to explore these parameters. There's so much creative fun that you can have with them. So for example, if I start to do things like turn on my flipping X and Y, you can see it completely changes the pattern, even though it's the same piece of content. We can see that depending on how I set my overlaps, it creates kind of sharper or more blurry and kind of, you know, almost etheric types of patterns. So we turn this back up. We can see it gets a little bit softer and kind of more layered feeling as opposed to being as hard edged and dense or contrast heavy. So there's a lot of really fun stuff you can explore here. Definitely don't hesitate to take, you know, pause the video right here if you need to play with this a little bit. There's a lot of fun stuff. Now, one thing we can also add to this, which I find is really fun, is to continue the iterative process of tiling. So for example, right now we have one tile top, which is doing a two by two tile. And unfortunately, you know, I wish we could turn this up to 10 right inside of the repeat X and Y, but it's limited to two by two. But what we could do is that the tile top itself, we can see it's not very expensive. Almost 0.1 millisecond CPU cook time, 0.025 millisecond cook time on the GPU. It's a very not expensive operator to use. So what I could do is just put another tile top right after it. And then this will essentially double up the amount of iterations I have inside of my tile. And then I can kind of repeat this same creative process that I went through. I can say, okay, well, do I want the content to say very hard edged, dense, contrasty, or do I want to do something like increase overlaps into this? And then you can also think about how these iterations stack on top of each other, because I could go back to my first tile, introduce more overlap, and that would then compound with the overlap happening in my second tile. And we can continue this process. We can see, so our first iteration here, you know, we can see two areas on the left and right that are kind of the focus. All of a sudden that becomes four. You know, I could tile that again to make it even more dense and more almost like a full background as opposed to a specific thing that we want to look at. And we can just continue to iterate on these different parameters. And you'll see as you get further in iterations, certain parameters are going to have more or less effect because at this point, the pattern is getting replicated and mirrored so many times that actually reflecting it doesn't have a visual impact on it. So you can have a lot of fun just adding more and more iterations, more composites. You can even take this same idea of inserting your own manual motion. You could even do that further down the line and take one of the tiles, mirror that and spin that and put that into another tile. So the creative possibilities are really endless here, but the main thing is just to realize how easy this is to get up and running and how effective it can be because we just used a movie file in a mirror top with a tiny bit of automation and you know signal going into the rotation and then even from the first tile top we already have some pretty compelling options for content that we can create here so i hope that helps you get into kaleidoscopes and these really cool iterative pattern building and i hope you enjoy Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.